Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about the etiology of Chinese medicine and acupuncture. In this category, we're going to discuss in these four categories the general introduction, the six exogenous pathogenic factors, endogenous pathogens. Also, the last one is pathological products. So for the etiology of, Chin of Chinese medicine and acupuncture, we're going to group them in these three categories. What is the etiology? From the definition, you can see etiology is a study of the causative factors of diseases, including the definition, formation of diseases, characteristics and the nature of pathogens. So it's a study that studies the causes of diseases. And also we're going to study how the, de the disease is going to develop, what's the prognosis, what's the characters, characteristics of the diseases, and also what's the pro prognosis of the diseases. And these aspects will reflect in the clinical practice, also the symptoms and signs. The etiology is one of the most important theories in Chinese medicine and acupuncture theories. It includes in four aspects, although we write there of three, there's another one we didn't write there. We are also going to discuss. So it, they can be grouped into the six exogenous path pathogenic factors, endogenous pathogens, and pathological products. And the last one, you can use others because they have different, they belong, they belong to different categories. Then we group them into others. But before we go in details, I want you to look at the pictures on the right side. There's one orchid on top, on the right corner, and also two flowers at the bottom. The one rose and the other one was orchids. As you can see from the picture, there's the, the two flowers at the bottom are not healthy. But how do you know it's not healthy? Actually, we can see from the shape, we can see from the color of the flowers. So you can see from the, the yellow color, and there are many ways to understand what happens to the flower or how to fix them. The most common way, the first one is actually to cut a piece of the, the leaves or stem of flowers you send to the lab, and from the lab, the, they can give you a report on each plant, and then you will see from the report who are lacking from the plant. Then you can add these products into the, the roots, and then the plants may grow well. The other way also is Actually, the other way is more com more common way is from the it's from a experienced gardener. They will know what happens to the plants and what should be done there. It's because from their experience, from their might be from the experience, also might from the knowledge. They can see what happens to the flowers, what's the color, how how withered they are, and then if you know what should be done to the plants. And then as you can see, these two different ways are very different, and these differences actually seem very similar to the differences between Chinese medicine and Western medicine. The reason also because you see from the the rose, 
as you can see the leaves is villous and also slightly yellow the stem also become yellow and in this condition the rose might lack of the water so you can water them as from the orchid on the right side the the yellow color there orchid has, has the habits the orchid doesn't like too much water so in this case are no experts in the plants especially in the orchids but i knew some characteristics of the, the orchids orchids doesn't like too much water so in this condition this orchid might be water water too much so the treatment for this orchid may reduce the water but when you look back to the picture these two plants at the bottom the leaves also slightly are all slightly yellow but the treatments for the rose you might add water there you may water them for the orchids you can dry the roots this might not be the correct answer to the plants but this is just an example to tell that different plants you need to study the background of the plants what's their habits and what's the property of the plants itself in order to grow them well this is very similar to our human health that's why for the same diseases for the same cough all the same fever why the different patients we use different treatments that's because of the property of these individuals are different that's why we're going to treat according to their individuals characteristics so from Chinese medicine and acupuncture the etiology the etiology we're going to study and this all or most of them are concluded from the symptoms into a symptom and then we study the characteristics of this group of symptoms and then we conclude it into one cause and then when we study the etiology here then we can also don't be confused by the names because the names sometimes doesn't make any sense to you or sort of fun might sound even funny to you especially if you are a um, very science person the reason is we're going to discuss it here we want you to understand that the etiology from chinese medicine and acupuncture is very different from western medicine so when you study the etiologies in western medicine actually you, also, you, go, you are going to study the etiologies in western medicine so you will understand why people become sick and what happens to the diseases but when you study these two although we use the same term etiology they mix them and from the, from the western medicine from the etiology from them also especially when you study the pathology you will study the bacteria you will study the viruses that's the actual stuff you can see in the lab so don't you believe that that's, those are the causes of the diseases those are the etiology of the diseases but when we study the etiologies in Chinese medicine and acupuncture for instance the six exogenous pathogenic factors these six factors the name of these six factors they are named after the wind the coldness the heat the fire the summer heat dampness so when you when you hear this, this, these names it sounds funny and uh, 
sometimes you will you will you will ask how can you use these words or the actually the actually wind or the temperature coldness or the fire to describe a disease or to define the causes of diseases the wind you see this these are very different from western medicine the western medicine is very similar the stuff it says the bacteria the viruses or the the dysfunction of the internal organs that's something you can see from the lab but from from us from chinese medicine and acupuncture this is such a nice the wind can you see the wind most of most of us we can't see the wind no one can see the wind actually can you see the coldness you also don't see the coldness the fire the fire we can see but the fire we talk about as the such a nice factors it's not the actual fire it's actually heat so if the excess heat is generally heat we call the fire we call the fire so it's actually the heat or the heat you, we also we can't see the heat summer heat because we can't see the dryness in the climate we also can't see all this stuff we cannot see but when you compare with the etiologies from western medicine those are the extra stuff you can see in the lab and these factors are something we can't see then how can you say these are the factors of the the cause of diseases so this you need to understand well that's in chinese medicine the etiology such as the wind these these factors we can't see it is true that we can't see but what we can see is once the patient was affected by certain pathogens we can see the reflection from the patient we can see the symptoms from the patient and then from the symptoms we can conclude different symptoms into a symptom and then we can match the different symptoms to the different pathogens that's how we understand the diseases so as you can see here it's very different very different from the western medicine and chinese medicine the western medicine you're going to study the actual pathogens and then from the pathogens you will know what happened there what happens afterwards on chinese medicine you will see what happens to the patient and then from the symptoms we conclude into the pathogen this is this one example nowadays is the covid 19. the covid 19 is the coronavirus, coronavirus virus before the lab find the virus the western medicine have, doesn't understand doesn't know what happens and even now although they understand they know it's the virus the covid 19 virus but there's no treatment for the pandemic for the epidemic diseases but how can chinese medicine to treat the covid 19 definitely we cannot find covid 19 the term in our chinese medicine theories we also don't find any covid the term of covid 19 in our textbooks but how can we treat covid 19 and actually from the effect as the covid 9 the covid 19 has almost has already actually under control in china and more than 90 percent of the patient more than 90 percent out of 80,000 patients were accepted chinese medicine and were treated by herbal chinese herbal medicine and they recovered but how exactly we treat the covid 19 
even we don't know what it was. That's from the, the symptoms, the characteristics of the from the patient. You can see the different symptoms and different signs from the patient, and then we conclude to certain pathogen, and then we can treat this kind of pathogen. This theories or this ways of thinking is very similar to the philosophies. At the beginning, we discussed about the philosophy. We discussed about where are we come from. I said we come from, we are made of qi. And then we also talk about the yin and yang theories. We talk about the five elements of theories. This is very similar to them. In these theories, we don't really care about what they are. We don't care about what they are exactly, but what we care about, same as the philosophies, we care about the movements, the functions, the characteristics of these, and then we can use, we can apply these characteristics in our practice. So the the terms, the medical terms of the exogenous factors, not only the, the title, but this title can also, similar to the five elements, can give you an image in your mind to help you to remember better. That's why we use these kinds of terms. And also this very, this is, very different from Western medicine, so that's why we spend so, so much time to discuss the introduction here. When you study Western medicine, they become confused. The reason why we use these kinds of terms is it, actually only to help us to remember better. Then from the etiology in Chinese medicine and acupuncture, our theories actually happened quite early. So in Zhou Dynasty, there's one very famous practitioner. His name is Yi He. So Yi is the daughter, He is her, his surname. We don't even know the names, but we know that Yi He is a, was a practitioner in Zhou Dynasty. Zhou so Dynasty is 770 BC to 436 BC. We don't know exactly years, but it does approximate at the time. From the books, Yihe, he proposed that the pathogens of diseases can be concluded into six qi, yin, yin qi, yang qi, also the wind, the rain, darkness and brightness. So as you can see from here, this is more than 2,500 years ago or 2,700 years ago. We already, in Chinese medicine, we already separate the religions from ghosts or from other spiritual stuff. We don't consider the ghost or the spiritual stuff as the pathogens of diseases. And even in Huang Di Neiji, so later on from our classic, Huang Di Neiji described very clearly that pathogens of diseases are the, it's actually because of the imbalance of yin and yang. I learned the, the, the problem from yin or yang. So, we don't consider the ghosts or spiritual matters as the pathogens. And later on, from Zhang Zhongjin, you still remember this name, Zhang Zhongjin, 150 AD to 219 AD, so 1800 years ago. This, he was the author of Sanghan Zabin, also the 
the four class one of the four class six. The second part of Sanghan Zhabinu, the second volume, we call Jing Gui Yao Lue. So in Jing Gui Yao Lue, there's one sentence he said that thousands of illnesses and no more than three kinds of injury. First was injury injury of the meridians and cholesterols by pathogenic factors that could invade the internal organs. Second was injury to the body surface by pathogenic factors that could um, invade the four extremities, the nine body or orifix, not office, orifix, and the vessels, eventually obstructing the flow of blood. The third type, the third type of injury was a mixed category that included such causes as intemporary sexualities, wounds, animals, or insect bites. So as you can, you can as you can see here, from the from 770 BC to 290 AD, here almost a thousand years. The theories developed from the six qi, which are yin, yang, wind, rain, darkness, and brightness. From these kinds of stuff, gradually developed into the pathogens we understand as the, which you can actually affect the meridians and cholesterols also can affect the, the flow of qi and blood or extremities or orifix vessels and also the actual the physical injuries such as the wounds or animal bites and in this book they Zhang, Dr. Zhang Category categories into three for the etiologies. Now we actually put into four categories that's the cis exogenous pathogenic factors, endogenous pathogens, and also the pathological products and alerts. So these are developed from 1,800 years ago. And also the next one, Chen Wu Zhe. Chen Wu Zhe was another daughter in Song Dynasty. Song Dynasty was 980 to 1,079 AD. In his books, he developed the theories of, of three causes of diseases. So he also developed from Zhang Zhongji. He regrouped the pathogens into these three factors. So he says that, that there are three different causes of the disease. The first one is exogenous factors. The second is in endogenous factors. The third one is the non-exogenous and non-endogenous factors. So as you can see from here, our definition, our classification nowadays is quite similar to this definition. The reason why we show you this is because we want you to understand that all the theories we are using now is actually developed from the theories from the past. And if you have some confusions, what you can do is you can go back to these theories. You can see where we can get the answers from. So these are the four groups we are going to use in our in, in this book: exogenous pathogens, in endogenous pathogens or 
pathogens or pathological products. The miscellaneous factors are actually the, the self-asset others, as you can see from the groups. The exogenous refers to the six exogenous factors or acetylential qi. We're going to discuss, we're going to talk about the, what does it mean by acetylential qi. Also for endogenous factors, it refers to the emotions, improper diet, improper improper work or rest, phlegm and flu fluids. Pathogens of products or of pathogens of path pathological products, a state of blood, traumatic injuries, parasites, animal bites. So here the, the phlegm and fluids belong to pathogens of pathological products. E2, E3 belong to endogenous factors and the exogenous factors include these two. Miscellaneous pathogens include these four. Parasites, animal bites, congenital factors, side effects of the medicine. So these are the information we're going to study in, the, in this topic of the etiology. When we study the theories of the etiologies in Chinese medicine, we also need to understand that we need to be careful that the etiology in Chinese medicine, we actually focus on the causes and the results. So at the beginning, we introduced let's treat the different diseases with the same formula, or we treat the different, we use the same formula to treat different diseases. So from there, we introduced the, one of the methods we call central differentiation and treatment variation. So if you still remember, if you don't remember, you should go back to the general general introduction there. We have introduced the central differentiation. But what's the central differentiation? What are we actually di differentiate? It's actually how to differentiate the symptoms, the symptoms is actually from the characteristics of the pathogens. These pathogens are the pathogens we are talking here in etiologies. If we understand what's the characteristics of the, um, the wind, of the coldness, and then from the symptoms of the patient, we can see the wind symptoms or the coldness symptoms, and then we can conclude that the patient might suffer from the wind. Or the cold, the or, or the coldness. So here we, the etiology in Chinese medicine and acupuncture, we focus on the causes and the results. We actually we we try to find out the actual the actual causes from the results. What are the results? The results are the symptoms and signs from the patient. Of such as fever, inversion to cold, or sore throat, or the signs that the red tongue is very fast pulse. These are the results of the diseases, and from these results, we try to trace back what's the cause of these symptoms. And from these symptoms, we're going to use our treatments to stop this kind of development 
trend. So this is very different from Western medicine. So am, am, am I clear to this? So why we spend so, so much time in here? That's because from it's quite confu confu confusion, especially when you study Chinese medicine and Western medicine together, you cannot miss them because the, the way it's very different. And also that's if you that's exactly why if you put the uh, you use the way to study to study Western medicine to study the Chinese herbal medicine sometimes doesn't work. The reason why is we're going to discuss in details in the pathogens, but here we will give you one example there. That's because the cis exogenous pathogens, the these factors such as the wind, the coldness. The wind is a pathogen, is a kind of pathogen, can cause certain diseases. But if the wind, if there's still a wind in the environment, also abnormal wind in the environment, but if the, the patient or the, the person is stronger or the immune system is better, or from the previous videos, we introduced the body constitution or someone got a better or stronger body, body constitution, they might still be healthy, although the climate is abnormal. In this condition, this wind is not considered as exogenous factors. You see from here, from this example, what's the difference between the wind and the wind, the, the pathogenic wind. What's the difference there? It only depends on if the wind can cause disease or not. If the wind can cause disease, because the wind is a pathogenic factor, if the, the wind does not cause diseases, the wind is the normal wind. We don't consider as pathogenic factors. That's why in a lab, there's no human. There's the pathogen from the environment. When the goes, there's no human body be affected. You can't see the pathogen wind in the lab. That's why you can't have the experiments from the lab. And also, there's another aspect need to. It's worthy to mention that from Western medicine, they always try to find the the answer or the only correct answer. So, such as pneumonia, they try to find what kinds of bacteria is infection. That's why they will say the blood tests or the sputums to the lab to find out what kinds of bacteria and then they will use antibiotics to treat the certain or specific bacteria. So from Chinese medicine and acupuncture theories, our pathogens here, the pathogens we talk about might cause multiple diseases, if not only one. So it's the relationship is not one to one, it's one to multiple. Also, it can be multiple to one. So what does it mean? That's, it means there's one pathogen, one kind of pathogen that's such as the, the wind or the coldness. This pathogen can cause multiple or different, very different, can cause very different symptoms and signs on different patients. And also different symptoms and signs from different patients can be different pathogens. And also sometimes the same symptoms or the same signs 
from different patients might from different pathogens. That's exactly why we use the same form, formula, formula. We, we, we use the same formula to treat different diseases or we use the, the same formula to treat different diseases or we use different formulas to, to treat the same disease. These are all the syndrome differentiations. So in next video, we're going to di discuss the six exogenous pathogenic factors. Thank you, guys.